What up with you guys, you know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike, and today we're gonna to be talking about the X-Touch Mini Ultra Compact Universal USB controller by the folks over at Behringer. Uh, it's a pretty dope controller uh, that you can use to control like your DAW, or maybe if you're like me, a performance musician, church musician, uh, gigging musician, musician or whatever that uses software, uh, you can use this to control your volumes on your tracks or your volumes on your um, software instruments or things like that. So uh, let's dig into it. Okay, so that's it. Feels pretty good there. Nice, solid build quality. Uh, it's kind of thick and chunky. Uh, you know, it's got some girth to it, uh, but it's got some weight and stuff to it. Not like heavy, like a brick. I'd say about a pound. Uh, of weight to it. Uh, so this particular controller has one, two, has eight encoders built onto it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These encoders actually click. So that's in interesting. That should be, that means you can use them as buttons as well uh, as a knob or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then you've got like eight little buttons here that kind of go with that. So you can probably use that uh, to map for mute, solo, whatever the case may be. Uh, then you have, this is like a, uh, a, a button right here, MC button, I guess that's for Mackie control maybe. Uh, then there's another little empty button. Uh, then you have your transport controls right here. Uh, and then you have this one little encoder knob uh, that is, you know, very Behringer-like. Uh, that is like what you'll find on kind of the, um, uh, X32 series of type uh, encoder, you know, stuff. Uh, then you have a layer, a A, B button, a layer, I guess that's for moving down uh, tracks or what have you. Uh, but it's a very solid build. Uh, USB ports right here. Got your little kind of gripped feet on the bottom. So this is pretty cool. So we're going to plug it up and we're going to see what this thing can do. Now, uh, I have this connected up inside of Ableton, as you can see here. Uh, and um, in order to use it effectively inside of uh, pretty much any DAW, unless you just want to actually physically go uh, and map each part one by one, like I can set it up here inside of Ableton and map each of the faders and map the play button and the start button because it sends out MIDI CC by default. Then you have, they have an editor that you can download that will allow you to control which MIDI note it actually sends out like CC or if it sends out MIDI notes or whatever the case may be, you can edit that all within that editor app. But uh, to kind of immediately use it in pretty much any DAW that accepts what they call the Mackie HUI or Mackie control standard, which just about every DAW uh, accepts that. You're going to have to put this in MC mode, and that's kind of a way to kind of keep up and going, get it going up and quick. Uh, so in order to do that, I have to unplug it here, uh, and then I have to hold down the MC button and then plug it up while I'm holding MC, and it's going to blink. And now it's in MC mode. Now, how I know it's in MC mode is there's a little light right here that says MC mode that lets you know that you're in there. Now you can see it's kind of lit up a little bit different. My stop button is lit up. If I press play, now my play button is lit up. And as you can see, it starts playing inside of Ableton. Same thing if I hit record, so on and so forth. They light up uh, to let me know that they are doing what they're supposed to do. Rewind. If I hit the loop button, the loop button turns on. Uh, this fader right here only controls the master fader. Now to make sure that I had this set up, I had to go into live preferences to make sure that it works. And I had to select Mackie control and make M the X-Touch Mini the you know standard right there and then make sure that I had remote uh, and track turn on uh, 
on the input. So uh, it's it's pretty good in terms of control and it's gonna work different in each DAW that you put it in, uh, depending on what their Mackie control standard is. Uh, it will control different things like this, like I said, does the plug in. You have another button right here. If I had an EQ pulled up, I can pull this up and control EQ. Um, this does an instrument. So I'm assuming if I tap that, like if I was in Logic, then the instrument would pop up. You see what I'm saying? As opposed to uh, you know, here in Ableton, nothing, it doesn't really do anything. So uh, inside of a, a, an app like this, it works pretty good. Now I'm gonna connect it up and use it in regular mode and I'm gonna show you how I could probably use, how I would probably use this in a live performance situation to control my sounds. Okay, so I have this loaded up here inside of main stage, one of the, the DAWs that I love to use. Uh, when I'm playing live uh, and uh, I have it mapped already and I have this template uh, I'll put the link to the descri description that's already pre-mapped for this particular controller that you can get in inside of main stage the link is in the description uh, but I have it already mapped to everything and I'll co cover the mappings at the end of this video but um, like I have my piano loaded up here and I have each one of these knobs uh, set to control a sound. So if I want to, I got piano on this first knob right here. You know what I mean? So if I want a piano, I could bring that up. You know, if I want it like a little bass sound, like some synth lead. So I got that on that one. Then I have a pad here so I could pull up piano for instance and have piano and pad you know what I'm saying so I got pad there let's see what I have on this one it's like another pad so I could blend pads you know what I'm saying? To kind of create a fat pad sound here. I think on four I have like strings. Yeah, so if I just wanted strings so I could blend in, you know, a little bit of that with some strings and a pad. You know what I'm saying? So I can blend those in to have those kind of sounds. Um, on six, I have like a synth brass. So I could have that loaded up. Uh, on seven, I turned down my piano. I got organ. You know what I'm saying? And then on eight, I have EP. You know what I'm saying? Already set up. So that's how I would pretty much use it and then I got like all of these set up to kind of like mute uh, all of those different sounds if I wanted to have multiple sounds open at the same time I can control like maybe I want to bring in a pad um, you know I already have them set at their respective levels but just mute it and then bring it in when I need it in the song uh, or whatever the case may be kind of got that covered uh, I have a record button set up here where I can record um, you know, I can play if I have tracks loaded up, stop them using that button. So these are, you know, pretty much set to the way they are. The loop button turns on the metronome. Uh, the rewind button is kind of a panic, so to speak, kind of stops everything. Uh, the, or the fast forward, the rewind button, uh, I forgot what the re rewind button, no, the rewind button is the panic button, sorry. Uh, the, oh, the, 
fast forward button is the master mute. So master mute, uh, panic, uh, and then this kind of cycles through my patches. So I can go to the next patch, you know, or to previous patches just by using uh, these buttons or what have you. So that's pretty much the layout. That's how I would use it. Uh, that's how I, I, you know, what I primarily look for in these controllers is the ability to be able to control uh, my sounds and my tracks. You know, there are other complex setups I would do where I would have maybe sounds on one fader or whatever, uh, and then have tracks, you know, controlling the other knobs or whatever the case may be. Uh, there's there's so many different ways you can lay it out and set it up uh, to make it work. Uh, and that's pretty much how uh, I would do it and what I look for in these con these type controllers to be able to do this. Uh, overall, I give this, this controller uh, in terms of usability, uh, I probably put it in in the in the a you know a minus you know range range only because I like faders instead of knob controls. Knob controls is cool, but they can be kind of funky and not as intuitive as a knob. Like this has a really nice fader, and I have this mapped to the master, uh, as you can see. But it has a really nice fader, and I would love to have. A controller with eight of these and they do make one with eight of these but it's a little bit more expensive you know you're talking uh, in a couple hundred dollar range uh, to get eight of those faders um, but I would give it a in terms of control I would give it a A minus uh, only because I like faders more than I like knobs uh, durability uh, I'd give it a definite A plus uh, and the durability and portability A plus uh, is very durable, very sturdy build, um, and it's thick and it's and it's still portable. Uh, and so yeah, it's it's a it's a good overall. I give it an eight. This is something that's really good. So link to check this out is in the description. You can check that out. Uh, and if you want to buy it and grab it, it's an affiliate link. So uh, if you do buy it, it does kind of kick back and help the channel a little bit if you decide that you want to uh, purchase it using those those affiliate links. Um, the template uh, that I have set up for main stage is in the description. The link for that is in the description as well. It um, uh, it's already mapped. Literally, all you would have to do is just plug this up and it would start working. All right. So hope this video helped you. Hope it blessed you. I got a ton more of these that I'm going to re be reviewing uh, that you'll be able to see. Uh, so we're just going to go through them because I bought pretty much all of these little small controllers. So I'm going to be reviewing them uh, over the coming days, uh, just going through all of the different uh, types of controllers like this, these little small MIDI controllers uh, that you can use for control. All right, folks, hit the like button, the share button, all those buttons that do things on the video. I'm out. Holla at your boy.